What's happening people? Welcome to Deconstructed, where I'll be taking you through some of my work and deconstructing it piece by piece. So today we're going to be deconstructing a video which I recently had the pleasure of filming, editing and directing um, by a wonderful artist called Emma V. And um, yeah, we're going to go through it today. So first and foremost, if you haven't actually seen the video yet, pause this video, please go to Emma V's site. I'm going to link it in the description below um, where you can go and watch the video and then come back here so we can break it down and show you some of the behind the scenes. When Emma V hit me up, we've been talking back and forth for a little while about the ideas of actually working together. Um, I've been a fan of um, Emma V for some time, love her music love her artistry and Romdeful as well. So when she mentioned that she had um, a new piece of work, you know, a new track with both of them on it, you know, I was excited straight away. So once we started going back and forth a bit more in the treatment, getting a better understanding as to the visuals and the different colors. Um, and I started looking at, you know, what kind of colors evoked playfulness? What kind of colors um, evoked a certain level of love, you know, and those were kind of like the primary colours that I wanted to feature in the actual um, film. Shout out to James and Ross who were the lighting guys on the day. And man, I'll tell you what, they done an amazing job because, you know, MV would come out with a different outfit and I'm saying, okay, that's black. Maybe we need to work with this colour for it to work on here. And we were just trying to find ways sometimes that we can complement the outfits and it can contrast quite a bit. So. That worked out quite well in the end, but again, couldn't have actually done that without James and Ross who, you know, absolutely killed that. So thanks again to those guys for um, pulling it out the hat, man. Seriously, it was, it was an amazing job, for real. So starting off on the narrative, um, when I started to build out the storyboard, one of the first parts we see when the film actually starts, we're going through the studio, that bit was actually a bit unplanned but it was just the sense of being able to come in and giving it the sort of rough around the edges feel about it as compared to it just being completely polished in this world, we wanted it to feel like, so you get a context of where we actually was. Sort of like an establishing shot basically. Um, and then we've got the first kind of visual effects where um, Emma V goes into, she says like, you got me beaming up and then she kind of splits out into three versions of herself and then comes back in. Um, I love doing kind of cloning effects anyway, but when it came down to doing it, I think the reason why I wanted to do it is because I was thinking, okay, what can we do that's visually interesting and that can kind of set the tone for the rest of the music video so that when you're in for the first seven seconds, you get an idea to say, okay, that's different. Um, so that was kind of like a sort of taster just to say, these are the kind of sort of tricks and you know, these are the kind of stuff that we're going to be putting in the film. So with this one, it took a little bit of work because this is one that I've done myself in one of my own videos. I knew from looking on camera straight away if it was going to work or not. So um, Lovero was very, very patient with me because we went through this a number of times where just something just wasn't quite right or it wasn't really hitting it. It wasn't, you know, so where she's actually thrown up her clothes and then she's changed into her other clothes. So many different things needed to be in place and it needed to be precise for it to come off. Um, and I was so relieved when actually editing that, that to see that it worked because that was probably the one that I was worried about the most on the actual day because I was thinking I'm, I'm sure we've got it but if we haven't got it I don't have a backup right now as to what we're going to do. Um, so that was a serious relief when we actually got that across the line so that was good. Sometimes it was there, the visual effects is there just for kind of visual interest and for a little bit of magic and sometimes it's there just to kind of add to the narrative. So this was definitely one where it was less about the narrative, it was more just about adding a little bit of visual interest to the screen at the time. Both of them have just got some incredible tattoos, it was just sick. So I was like, you know what would be dope is if we can get this and I can highlight, just outline it um, in post-production, just to kind of get it to pop a little bit. And we're like, yeah, cool. Undoubtedly, this whole sequence is probably the, for me, it's the part that I like the most of the whole music video. So the first thing that we have is the clone effect. Now this clone effect I've done a few times on, you know, my personal page. 
but again because the studio that we was in it had um little runway that we had before the lighting started to get in shot and stuff like that so what i decided to do in post is even though we have the clone effect i decided to do that's why i've done the split screen there so that we can kind of extend on the space a little bit without her having to go from left to right there's a part in the song where she says um so let's get close i need you the most so i was like okay so the close point when she says let's get close we need to have some hands in there Kirsten's hands are going to come as if you're being embraced by Kirsten where you guys are going to have like a nice little hug. So we've done that, but it's actually two different scenes. So we've got that and then I had to pause, get Kirsten in. That's when the hands come in and then we transition. And then it's going to reveal to actually show the next scene underneath it. So when she's saying, um, so let's get close and I need you the most. When she says that point, I wanted that I need you the most point to open up to actually show Kirsten, you know, as like a beauty portrait shot. So literally on the day, all we had was a magazine and I drew tracking marks on it. It was an A4 piece of paper, stuck it down with some sellotape the night before, and then just drew some tracking marks on the magazine itself. Um, and she's literally just holding just this thing without any idea in terms of how it's gonna stitch together or what's gonna come next a whole heap of different techniques in post-production from changing the color of the background to animating the text coming in on screen. I edited it and then I was like, there's just something missing. It just didn't have enough fullness to that actual transition. So I got out my blue screen, green screen at home, got a few of my home plants and stuff like that. And I just wanted to just do some shots of the camera going through um, like these trees and stuff because obviously we had plants on the day so I wanted to add to that foliage a little bit so we're kind of going through it to the next scene and I think it helped a lot in terms of just filling out that transition a lot more before we go to the magazine and it actually rotates around in the way that it does so I was really happy with how that came out then we come on to the tunnel transition this is something where we're going to be able to add a little bit of dimension and add a bit more space to it in a way that we don't actually have you know on set because we didn't have that much room to be able to go forwards and backwards and we had quite a limited um, play area to be able to work in by the time we got to the end of the day um, we still needed to get wonderful shots in and I know he's somebody who likes the whole clone effects thing as well it was just about once taking that into post-production just seeing how can stretch it for that amount of time as well without it just being quite boring on screen and then it was kind of like a bit of a design game in terms of how can we lay these out in a way that's visually interesting without trying to do the most and trying to do too much and um, I think again it worked quite well and it helped to sort of eat up that time for that last bit of his sort of solo part so I hope you've enjoyed um, that deconstruction of Emma V's video Aha uh -huh, Okay um, I hope it's set some insight into how I work in terms of the process behind it all. And yeah, I just want to say a massive, huge shout out and thanks again to I Love Live, um, to John, to Sabrina, to Emma V, Rhonda Fall, the whole team. Um, just a talented group of people, just huge amount of fun to be able to work with everyone on this. Um, good energy, good vibes. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Share it. Go and watch the video again. Go and watch the music video again. Share it with everyone. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care.